Welcome to another exciting edition of The Trading Bell. This week we are coming to you from Kenya Power Company here in Parklands. And as the country celebrates World International Women's Day, we are delighted to be speaking to the Managing Director of Kenya Power and this is Engineer Rosemary Odour. Happy International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day, Abby, and uh, I'm happy to be here with you. Thank you. But before we get into the interview, let's take a look at her profile. Engineer Rosemary Odour was appointed as the Acting Managing Director and CEO on 4th August 2021. She holds a Master's of Business Administration from University of Nairobi and a Bachelor of Technology degree in Electrical and Communications Engineering from Moi University. Rosemary has wide experience in engineering and management, having joined the company in 1991 and served in various senior positions including general manager in charge of commercial services and sales. She is a registered professional engineer with the Engineers Board of Kenya. Uh, engineer, the company has been faced with a number of headwinds in terms of performance. You recently released your half-year results. Are you confident that the company is getting back on track? Yes, thank you. Thank you, uh, Abby. From the results that we released, the half-year results, uh, compared to previous year, we see an improvement. Uh, in December 2020, the profit before tax was 332 million shillings. The just released results, uh, the profit before tax was 5.659 billion which is a, a, a rise from the last financial year. The trajectory is positive and the interventions that we have put in this transformative journey are bearing fruit. We are confident that we will continue in this positive journey. All right. And uh, MD, it hasn't been an easy transition for you coming into an organization that has been undergoing a number of reforms, which have sort of taken staff in different directions. And how has it been in terms of uh, just uh, implementing uh, the key reforms that you're doing, especially touching on cutting on uh, leakages in terms of revenue, as well as uh, streamlining operations. When, when, when an organization goes through transformation, transformation is not business as usual. It involves uh, adjustments, it involves changes, it involves stopping doing some things and beginning doing some things or doing some things better. So a transformative journey will have definitely have impact, not only on, on employees, but on all stakeholders. So we are alive to the fact that a transformative journey requires sacrifices, requires change of way of doing things, requires improvements in one way or the other. As we look at the areas of leakages that require to be sealed, we look at the areas of process weaknesses that require to be improved. So yes, there will be pain as you go through transformation, but it is a pain that has light at the end of the tunnel. An example being those half year results. All of us as employees are celebrating that the hard work we've put in in the half year is yielding results. So we shall continue with this journey. We see success at the end of the tunnel and that gives us motivation to continue. And uh, just a follow up to this, uh, of course, from an operation standpoint, Talk to us about the measures that you're instituting as we speak. And uh, do you have any timelines by which you hope to see the ship stabilizing? It's good that you've used uh, an analogy of a ship. Yes, Kenya Power is like a very big ship. And for a big ship, when you want to turn, a transformation is a turn. When you want to turn a big ship, it is a gradual yet very calculated. If you're moving east and you want to go north, you won't turn from east to north in an instant, sure. but you'll put interventions that will keep moving you northward, inching slowly by slowly, and the end game will be you will be northward. So we have put in some uh, some in, uh, in, in interventions that we want to carry out, some immediate ones, some medium term and long term in, in, in interventions that we will be carrying out to see the end game of an agile and transformed KPLC. In the immediate term, we have picked some key focus areas and uh, the key focus areas we have is to increase our sales, to increase our revenue, to reduce our losses, to manage our costs and to also improve our customer satisfaction. So on these pillars we have put some focus actions that we are carrying out. Mm -hmm. We have targets that we do annually as an organization. So we look at an annual target and we drive initiatives that will drive that target. So this year our annual actions are hinged on these interventions and as we work on each of these areas then 
cumulatively it brings us the positive performance. We have given ourselves a theme of, 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 of keeping the momentum or, 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 or sustaining the momentum that we started in the last financial year. And as we build on that momentum, we are seeing the results coming out. All right. And uh, in terms of um, seeing the results coming out, uh, what areas are we likely to also see uh, a lot of uh, concerted efforts, especially when it comes to driving up sales? Yes, as I mentioned, uh, we, we drive up sales by carrying out some background activities that we have mapped out. And uh, so we have sliced it down to the employees so that they are able to internalize this and internalize their contributions to the growing of the sales. As we grow sales, one of the things we do is to expedite connection of people who require a connection, especially the premium cost customers who consume, uh, uh, consume high amounts of energy. Then uh, the other area is to, uh, to onboard even the domestics and the rural customers. So increasing connectivity increases our sales. The other way that we increase our sales is by reducing downtime. Any downtime of equipment or downtime of the system loses an opportunity to sell. So we are reducing the lost opportunities and by that way growing the sales. The other way that we grow the sales is by removing any place where there's a leakage. If there's a direct connection or there's an illegal connection, that denies us of a sale. And so by, by cutting off any leakages, we are able to get the sales onboarded and we are able to increase our sales. So we, we, we have different crews that uh, are deployed to do, do these different things. There's a crew that does connectivity, there's a crew that does uh, maintenance of the system to keep the system downtime low, there's a crew that does the inspections so that we are able to correct any faulty equipment, there's another crew that does then uh, the war on losses. But the war on losses we are doing it collectively. We are even now onboarding the office-based staff periodically to join with the field staff and just go out there, remove any legal connections, identify any faulty equipment, have it replaced so that we increase our sales. And uh, Madam MD, of course, your line of business is very labor intensive for you to be able to achieve all this. At the same time, you're implementing a staff rationalization. Is this uh, something that will be for the good of the business or is it a uh, thought that uh, perhaps the leadership needs to go back to the drawing board? Um, you are not right in saying we are implementing a staff rationalization. Those are thoughts on the table. And so when the time is ripe, those will then come out. That involves a lot of stakeholder engagement. It involves even discussing with the parent ministry. That has not yet happened, so we cannot really discuss that. But mm -hmm. in our transformation journey, uh, one of the things that we will have to do is to improve the way we do things, is to become more agile as an organization. And this involves rejigging some of the things involved in, in terms of placements, in terms of deployment, in terms of use of technology, mechanization. Those are all areas that are under consideration in this transformative journey. As I mentioned, we are also looking at our processes to make our processes better and to make them even uh, more customer centric. The world is going digital a lot and uh, our customer is also digitizing and their expectations are also in the digital area. Mm -hmm. So we're also improving in the use of digital tools to be able to do our work. As much as it is labor in intensive, mechanization helps mm -hmm. the labor. Um, digitization helps in the focus. Uh, some things that we used to uh, rudimentarily do can now be done using technology. For example, we are uh, changing our system to, to, to be automated. With an automated system and with better communication, we're able to see what is happening in the system in a better way. Of course, this is resource heavy and it will take a process for us to be totally automated. So uh, we will look at both the staff, the equipment, the processes as we are transforming. And uh, of course, this is one of the major transitions that the company may have to go through. And uh, looking at this proposal around the staff rationalization, uh, how far is it in terms of engagement with the parent ministry? How soon is it likely to be implemented? Or do you have any timelines? As I mentioned, I do not have timelines for that as of now. 
it is just at the very, very initial stages. Mm -hmm. There is a possibility that we will change course as we continue discussing and engaging with other stakeholders. So this really isn't something that is ready for discussing out. All so right. we still don't have a, a, a plan or a program. These are discussions that are still very preliminary and are not yet ready really to release because we might even change course mm -hmm. as we discuss the same. All right. Speaking about changing course, the power utility firm has been trying to bring down the cost of electricity. And this has seen a lot of engagement from the parent ministry in terms of reviewing the independent power produ uh, producers, uh, the contracts that we have had. And as we speak, uh, would you be able to confirm to us the cost of electricity? Has it reflected your aspirations on what you had committed? Um, I'm sure you are, you, 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 are, you are privy to the pronouncement by the executive of a 15% uh, reduction of, of tariff on the December bills which were billed in January. And that was actually actualized, I believe, if you are a user of electricity, perhaps you are not, mm -hmm. uh, then you would know that the electricity bills of January were at a tariff that was 15% or more. Actually, some of the tariff levels went beyond 15% to the end user based on the gazetted reduction. Mm -hmm. So the aspirations are already being met. The 15% was already gazetted and implemented in January and continues to be implemented. As KPLC, we are of course stakeholders. This is not a KPLC matter. This is a, uh, a sector-wide issue mm -hmm. and indeed it is um, a, a country uh, discussion and KPLC has a part to play amongst the other sector and country players and indeed we are committed to playing our part to ensure that the government's aspirations are met. All right. Madam MD, both you and I know that uh, when we have uh, favorable electricity costs, it has a big impact on the economy. Mm. And uh, the envisioned plan was to have 30% uh, reduction. Are we likely to see the second phase perhaps uh, taking off? And uh, what does it mean to the consumer down at the final line? You're right indeed in saying that uh, the, the, the intention is for us to have affordable electricity in the economy. That is why then the discussion is not a Kenya power issue. It is a sector-wide and a country-wide discussion. Yes. At the energy sector, uh, we are headed at the Ministry of Energy. So this initiative is actually being championed at the Ministry of Energy. Kenya Power will have her part to play, and this we are very committed to play, and we will be supporting so that the government aspirations are met. We are very committed to ensuring that any pronouncements and any directional policy that we are taking as a sector KPLC will play her part uh, very actively and very well. So you are assuring to our viewers that uh, power costs will further go down? I would uh, leave that uh, for a pronouncement uh, and I would say that for us we are following on the executive pronouncement as guided by the Ministry of Energy and as we move along the, the, the Ministry will be able to guide the country on how we move along. But uh, I, I am very positive the 15% has already been implemented. And I believe as government uh, makes policy and guides direction, we shall be able to move in the right direction. All right. And uh, looking at the big picture, Madam MD, uh, Kenya Power has also been diversifying in terms of tapping into new revenue lines. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw uh, the fiber optic, for instance, mm -hmm. and uh, Kenya Power has continuously tried to remain uh, innovative in terms of uh, tapping into new sectors. Would you like to just give us an overview of some of the other areas perhaps you are looking into diversifying? At the same time, uh, how much are you looking to spend towards this? Our diversification strategy is aimed at um, us looking at other streams of revenue apart from the electricity revenue. But as we look at diversification, we are also looking at it in a careful manner in the areas where we already exist. You know that we haul the, uh, the backbone of fiber in the country. Correct. Uh, courtesy of our transmission lines. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the backbone runs on our transmission lines. And so we are actually involved in the area of data transfer for a long time now. 
we actually offer uh, dark, fi dark fiber to other to other um, service providers, mm -hmm. and uh, that is an area of revenue. So we are just expanding that area of revenue di diversification by getting involved in the last mile. We see like this an opportunity. We have uh, done our, our checks and our background studies that shows this an opportunity, a great opportunity. We are more than 42 million Kenyans. And so there's a huge, huge opportunity for reaching these 42 million Kenyans. When I look at mobile telephony, uh, a few years ago it was not there. Now every last person in the village has a mobile telephone for use in data, for use in all these other areas. So we are getting into this space. We are positive that there's an opportunity for us and we look to growing ourselves. It is still at the very beginning stages, so we really can't talk about the huge revenues or the amount of revenues that we are going to spend. This year we are using it as a learning and, 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 and uh, uh, like a diving board kind of year, mm -hmm. and in next year then it will be clearer on our expenses and our investments in this area for growth, but our studies show us that there is an opportunity for us. All right. And there are other areas other than fiber that perhaps uh, you could be looking to take up down the line? Yes, in innovation never stops. Innovation uh, transforms by the day. And uh, we will not want to discuss our, our incubation innovations. <laughs> they are incubating and when they are ripe to come out to the field, we shall bring them out. All right. Yeah. And uh, as we come to the tail end of our discussion, um, one of the other emerging challenge definitely is on vandalism. Mm -hmm. And uh, the president pronounced himself uh, banning scrap metal and what does this portend for Kenya Power? Because you're also very vulnerable when you look at um, the business operations that you are under. How has vandalism affected operations? V vandalism has had a very huge negative impact on, 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 on KPLC and on infrastructure in general. And it is not a desirable thing in society because vandalism then denies us the opportunity to reach out to other Kenyans to improve our network, to strengthen the network. We'll be spending uh, our resources uh, repairing the, the areas that have been damaged through vandalism. So vandalism is, is, is a disease that we would uh, desire to see it come to a close. Our interactions with other players, uh, as we have moved now, we are moving with an all government involvement in the fight against vandalism, is bearing fruit. And we believe that is the direction to go. We have seen since, uh, since the ban, we are seeing a reduction in the incidences on, of vandalism. We will continue to be vigil uh, to ensure that uh, this vice does not rise again. And we believe by having controls and having measures in this space, it should be able to work for us well. Vandalism for us uh, destroys our equipment, keeps our customers not satisfied. Uh, keeps our sales down because when a transformer, for example, is vandalized, then it means the 60, 70 people who are served by that transformer stay off supply. It may take time before we actually identify the vandalized transformer. That means the line is off as we try to identify where the fault was. So uh, for us, we see this as a positive move. We will be happy to see a more organized uh, ecosystem in that area, and we are happy to deal with the uh, uh, the, the, the national government agencies in this fight against vandalism. We are playing a very active role there and uh, it is bearing fruit for us and we are happy. All right. And in closing, Madam MD, of course, what is the, is the future of Kenyan power looking like, especially now that you're seeing uh, some stability, especially in your trading results? Are you perhaps considering floating uh, a bond at the stock markets to just show up uh, your revenues in terms of tapping into new projects like you mentioned. What lies ahead? We are very open. We are open to one, this government support. We are open to DFI support, donor funded. We are open to any areas that we will see in the medium and long term in terms of financing. For now, we are not at that point of a bond because we are just at that recovery point. We are recovering based on uh, the, 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 the renewed strategy that we have put in place, based on quite some support from government in terms of follow-ups for debt, in terms of uh, supporting us in ensuring the government agencies are, are, are paying their bills in time, and in terms of a moratorium. We have a moratorium on, on the repayment of loans. So for now, that is uh, cushioning us as we turn around. 
But in the end game, we see an agile KPLC. We see us at a KPLC standing on its own and doing business and uh, making Kenyans happy. Our vision is to be the energy solutions provider of choice. So we see that uh, uh, coming into view in a short while, being the energy solutions provider of choice. Everyone coming to KPLC, as the market is liberalized, we expect that we'll remain standing and we'll remain the solutions provider of choice with our various other products, including the fiber that we spoke about, including the other innovations that we are talking about. You've heard we are moving in the electric vehicle uh, space and anything else that comes our way that will make sense for, for the Kenyans. We also see Kenya Power doing very well in terms of sales of electricity. As the cost of electricity goes down, um, contrary to the opinion that uh, then uh, we will not do well, we expect that more investors will come into the country to invest in, uh, in ventures that will use more electricity. So our vision is to see the sales growing and therefore the energy sector being, to, being able to stand on its own to support the economy. All right. Perhaps you are parting short to investors and shareholders who are seeing some uh, uh, renewed confidence in the business. Uh, what, what is your message to them, especially when you look at um, your full year outlook? now that you've released your half year? My message is to them is come invest in Kenya, expand your investments, expand your businesses. Kenya Power is here for you. We are having a stable network. We are growing the network. We'll be here to serve you well so that you're able to do your business well and to make a, a handsome business out of it. And we are here for the long haul, so you're welcome to do business with us. All right, many thanks, Engineer Rosemary. Th thank you very much, Abby, for having me. All right, we've been speaking to the Acting Managing Director at Kenya Power, just giving her perspectives into how the business is evolving, especially at a place and time where it has been experiencing a couple of headwinds. She's quite optimistic that the future remains bright. And that's why we bring it to a close on this week's edition of The Trading Bell. My name is Abi Agena. Keep it locked on KT News, where you get the whole story.